Who's ready to day text? Thank you all who are ready for joining me. It's Friday, May 24th. We meet every weekday morning and Saturday morning unless otherwise scheduled to progressively work our way through the biblical books and letters as well as other related texts and histories. We focus primarily on the Bible though because it contains the best documents from history regarding the God Jah and the life and teachings of Jesus. So we are reading one of the letters of Jesus' early followers, his beloved follower, John. And we're in John's first letter. There are three letters of John near the end of the New Testament before the book of Revelation. In addition to John's gospel or historical narrative involving Jesus. So we're in chapter 2 of 1 John, and we're going to be reading four verses today, verses 22 through 25. I'll go ahead and read those, and then I'll make a brief application, and we'll be on our way. I will also give some updates at the end of the show for this Sunday show, um, Open Session 5. Okay, 1 John chapter 2. And we're going to start reading with verse 22. Who is the liar if it is not the one who renounces belief with the words, Jesus is not the Christ? This is the one who is opposing the Christ or the Antichrist. The one who renounces belief in both the Father and the Son. Verse 23. Each person who renounces belief in the Son does not have the Father. Each person who openly proclaims the Son does have the Father. Verse 24, the one you heard who is from the beginning, he's mentioned this several times to this point, the one from the beginning. Now you know why he starts out his, his gospel or great message narrative the way he does, right? In the beginning. Verse 24, the one you heard who is from the beginning must live with or in you. If the one you heard who is from the beginning should remain in you, in the future you will live with the Son and with the Father. Ja. Verse 25, this is the promise which he promised to us, namely, unending life. Okay, let's back up here just a little bit. So, in verse 22, you notice that it states that people can renounce their belief. Jack, we need to make a note of this and a special inquiry if you haven't already. <laughs> because if you renounce belief, that must mean you had belief, right? <laughs> you came to a point where you believed and then you renounced your belief, like John says here. So... Um, Jack is a figure in uh, in our shows that um, relates to an actual person who uses that name, but who often brings up salvation issues or who's interested in him. So I I try to point things out for Jack. <laughs> Not that he doesn't already know them, but sometimes things come up in ways and in texts that aren't directly related to some of the salvation issues, but then some of them do. And so in this case, it seems to me that if a person were to renounce belief, they would have already had to have had belief in both the Father and the Son, it says. And then they, they, if they renounce that belief with the words, Jesus is not the Christ, then, of course, they're opposing the Christ. Never let anyone cause you to say those words. There are many wicked people. All of these devil worshipers and Luciferians, oh man, they have absolutely nothing to offer you. But they will take what you have and that they have given up, and that is your faith. So don't let them do it. Why should you? Why would anyone want to believe in these people who promote all of this horrible, filthy trash, this disgusting ways of life, theft, lying, <laughs> all these criminal activities and things they would never want done to them. Proving their hypocrisy every single day. <laughs> Who would want to be with those people? 
If they don't want to be with us and with the Father and the Son, let them have whatever it is they think they have. I don't think they have anything. And I think we have everything. We have the Father and the Son. Tell me exactly what else we need to have everything since they made everything. You'll notice also here, well, let's, let's, let's get back to, um, well, let's get to the text. So verse 23, each person who renounces belief in the Son does not have the Father. Just like Jesus says, you honor the, the Son, you honor the Father. You, if you reject the Son, you reject the Father. John 5, essentially that's what he, he taught there. And if you openly proclaim the Son, you do have the Father. And remember what Jesus taught. The one who openly confesses union with him before men. He will openly confess union with us before the Father and his angels. So who cares what people of this world think? If they don't accept Jah and the Son, the, one who made, the ones who made all things, and the ones who redeemed us through their sacrifice and love, who cares? Let them have all that stuff, whatever it is, right? What? Movies? Concerts? Clothes that we're not even supposed to be wearing because we weren't made to wear clothes? We do now, but you, you get my point. My point is, people of the world are chasing after and valuing all the things we weren't actually supposed to value. But in this world that has been erected on top of Jaws Earth, it's a fake world. It's a false world. It's meant to mimic the things that Jah actually meant for us, but in ways that are not anywhere close. I'm just taking a look at the comments here. We'll get to that in a second. So um, now, so verse 24, it says he refers again to uh, the one from the beginning. We're talking about Jesus, the word, wisdom. And, and then he says, if he remains with you, that in the future you will live with the Son and the Father, Jah. Now notice, just like in Revelation 1, which we'll get to event in not too far in the future, John does not mention the Holy Spirit. He doesn't mention the Holy Spirit as an, another separate entity with whom we can have association like we do with the Father and the Son. He doesn't say that here. It would have been a perfect opportunity if, in fact, those are the three persons in one God that we would live with in this context. So it's just, it's a strange omission if John was a Trinitarian in the sense that he accepted the Holy Spirit as an actual co-equal person. Um, and he does the same thing in Revelation 1. He refers to the seven spirits before God's throne, but not the Holy Spirit. Either way, we, we appreciate and, of course, promote and use the Holy Spirit. It's just a question of whether or not it's part of a trinity. That often becomes an issue. And I just don't think that <laughs> texts like this really lend themselves to any kind of Trinitarian association uh, with in, the, in our post-life world, or even currently, if they remain with us or in us in the spiritual sense. So the promise we have is of unending life in the future. And whether or not we continue to live now or not is not the issue. We're here to promote Jah and Jesus. And if we do that, well, then we're fulfilling our obligation before God. And we're promoting the things that we've actually come to believe in association with Jesus because of the evidence that we have learned. So why would we renounce Jesus as the Christ? Who else is going to be the Christ? It's not like that whole history of events can be replicated again with all these different people and tribes and laws and sacrifices temporarily paving the way for the ultimate sacrifice, the Messiah, who would be the last Adam and redeem us the way Adam lost us. So how's that all going to happen again? It, there is the, the, the amount of time and the types of things and the people involved and the nations and the events described in the Bible over thousands of years. Either that's just all a story that came together somehow and it's never going to happen again or that's the real history that's the real events that took place that brought us to where we are now 
and we're here. There's no other Messiah coming. It's done. Now we have to have faith in the things that have a ha that have occurred. The things that we can de we can show took place because of the evidence that is there on the earth and in history and in our written literature, our literature, I should say, about things in the past. All of those things together are consistent when it comes to the events related in the Bible from Genesis all the way through to John's letter and, of course, into the Revelation. But that's a different type of text that also involves even further uh, events in the future. But we're not going to get too far into that right now. My point is that we have a history of people and writings and events and kingdoms and a Messiah who came in the name of a God and who gave his life in a way that corresponds to the life that Adam lost. How many times do you think a history or story can be put together like that? That's either it or it's nothing because I just, there's no way to recreate all of these things in a way that would allow for them to be fulfilled again. And the way they were fulfilled in the first place is so descriptive and detailed and we're able to verify almost everything, the people, the places, the teachings, we have good reasons, the best, for faith in the Father and in the Son. So we should openly proclaim them. I don't care what anyone thinks as far as accepting the Father or the Son. I mean, I care about people and what they think with respect to trying to convince them. But I'm not here to please them. <laughs> it's like Paul in Galatians 1. I am not here to please men in the sense of doing what they want me to do if it doesn't line up with what Jah or Jesus does. We try to get along with everyone, but we're here to praise Jah, proclaim the Father and the Son. This is real history. These are real people, real events, and we're in a real world created by a real living God. This is not an accident. We're not here because of countless random events that somehow <laughs> ended up bringing together the universe, the earth, and all the things in it. And it's just so ridiculous when you even start to, to dwell on that track that <laughs> I, I, can't even, I can't even keep going with it. But, and, and there's no reason to because I'm not with people who are promoting those things. So I'm happy to be with those who accept the Father and the Son because I believe that is a reasonable belief based on history and all the things we know about life and life giving life to life, which means it's eternal because we're here now. And that's the life we call Jah, that we can identify in history, specifically the biblical and other histories and historians like Diodorus, those who recognize the Jews and others worship this God and the ways that they worshiped him. So we worship him through Jesus Christ today, not through the Mosaic law and requirements that they had to endure during that time up until Jesus, he has come. And that's why we proclaim him as the Christ. And we will not renounce him, no matter what. Why should we? Why should we renounce what is based on the best available reasons just for a bunch of people who compromise their rear end every day, who cannot figure out binary genders, and who have no idea how we even got here. So much so that they believe it's a series of random accidents that over time have created a bisymmetrical being and a bilaterally symmetrical being and all other creatures of the earth with, with similar symmetry and functionality that <laughs> all coexist together to create a survivable environment. That's not an accident, that's a design. Praise Jah and his son because they deserve it. They're the ones who gave us life, not only initially, but again, through the sacrifice of Jesus, and may, and even again, right? I mean, the only reason we're still here is because of Jesus, and the only reason we'll be here again if we happen to die is because of Jesus. 
Why would we renounce Jesus? Makes no sense. Just because some other people who don't believe in him want us to renounce him? I've got a few words to tell those people. <laughs> I won't say them here, though. And I probably won't say it that way to them either. They're not worth it. So try to stay away from people who aren't going to cultivate your faith. Stay away from people who oppose the Christ. Let them have whatever it is they think they have. I'm here to tell you they don't have anything. Nothing. And every single thing they have will be taken away. Just like with us. Because we're all going to the same place. We're just not all going to the same place with the same faith in the Father and in the Son. That's the difference. And it's a big difference. So I thank you all for uh, sharing these texts with me. They get me going. I always feel better after I read the biblical material and texts that are about Jah and Jesus and teach us what we should be thinking about most, what to do, what not to do. It's great. So I thank you all for being a part of this. And I'll be back tomorrow, Saturday, for uh, another day text. I've got a lot of videos. I'm trying to get them on, but I got my other channel up now. You should take a look at that. Subscribe if you haven't already, because I'm going to be putting a lot of other information there that while you may not be as interested in property claims or fraud, it has to do with my history involved with these people. So if that at all interests you, I highly recommend you subscribe to the, uh, the property fraud channel because I'm going to be presenting a lot of stuff there. And I'm not going to always make alerts here on this channel. Uh, for that channel. And um, so keep that in mind. Also, this Sunday, 8.30, we're going to do open session five where we talk about pretty much anything. If there's something you want me to try to fit in the show, you can email or text me beforehand or you can do so during the show and then we'll just we'll talk about it. I'm going to start out the show with a couple subjects. I've got some... I <laughs> I got some good ideas, so stay tuned. And then let me just check at this, with this uh, question here. It looks like Betsy says, One of my friends who believed in Jesus, when she heard the Jewish teachings, now she does not believe the Jewish teachings. Well, so if, if you mean the Jewish teachings like non-biblical teachings, then it can be very difficult to, of course, <laughs> cultivate faith in Jesus uh, uh, if you're considering non-biblical Jewish material because they don't believe in Jesus as the Messiah. So we do our best to try to help people see the reasons. Not everyone's going to see it. Some people who see it aren't going to accept it. We have to live with that because our goal is to live with the Father and the Son, not with people who don't believe in them. If they do, great. <laughs> More the better. But that's not a requirement for us. Our requirement is the best available reasons, and they consistently point us to the Father and the Son. So that's whom we follow and whom we proclaim because we believe they're the ones who are going to really help humanity and who have been helping us the whole time. We've just been making decisions and following other ways that have made it hard for them to help us. And so it seems like they're not really with us. But how could that be true if they made us? In any case, some good thoughts for us today. I thank you once again for joining me. Be back tomorrow for another day text. We're getting, getting, working our way through 1 John. I've got the whole letter for us to consider, so that's good material. We can get a good sense of what John was dealing with, how he viewed Jesus and the Father, and the things that he wanted us to believe concerning them. 